Don't sound so enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs>
And can you tell us all what your favourite song is? Wow, that's a good question. Um, a song. Yeah, because yeah. you kind of sing yeah. <coughs> different Stand songs. Stand By Me is one, of, by me. Mm -hmm. one of my favourites. Mm. Mm. For me personally, it's more than a number. Little Red Book, some people know it as. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know, for me, it's probably Save the Last Dance because it's got an interesting story. What's the story? The, uh, the, the, the writer of the song, um, his wife was uh, wheelchair bound. So he wrote the song because every time he'd go out, she'd want to dance. <sighs> and rather than say to her, stay by my side, he would say, yeah, go off. Do your thing by the end of the night, you know, save the last dance for me. So. It's yeah. beautiful. That's beautiful. So beautiful. Kind of adds a bit more weight to the yeah. song. Yeah. I'd like to know the story on how the three of you came part of the Drifters. Like, mm. did you have to audition or were you found? And what was it like for you? Because were you, fa were you fans of the band in, you know, the 50s and 60s and 70s? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you weren't even born <laughs> in the 60s, I Yeah. But, um, you guys look like millennials. Yeah, but I guess, I mean, it's music that you grow up with. Um, I think like yourselves, you kind of, it's stuff that you know. So. Meeting Ray for me was kind of like, yeah, just a piece of the jigsaw because my career was already on a certain path. And um, I actually whooped him at pool. Yes. And that, that was my, uh, but yeah, that was my end. Oh, he's paid for it. How? He's had to do all the rehearsals, all the sound checks. <laughs> you guys seem yeah, like you also have a lot of stories between We've been you. a lot of places. We've, yeah. seen, we've been blessed to see a lot of the world and. Uh, meet a lot of wonderful people. And with mm -hmm. that well, comes a lot of experience, you know, and these experiences collectively give you, give you substance, and we, we, we do. Mm -hmm. Combined, we have a lot of experience. And uh, they're being a bit modest, if you don't mind me saying. Yes, they are. They're, they're, they're being a bit they modest. won't let anyone all of the get guys, a word in. All of the guys, <laughs> all of the guys have, uh, have auditioned for their position. Mm -hmm. They were chosen specifically for not just their vocal talent, but for their personality. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's always been very important for the Drifters, you know? The Drifters were always about four guys that, that made harmony, not just on stage, but mm -hmm. off stage. And that's what, because we travel so much, we see each other more than each other's wives and girlfriends. Mm -hmm. You know, it's constantly working for us. So uh, it's important to be able to get along, but it's more important to have that spirit. And that's, mm -hmm. I think that's what we all have in common. We have yeah. that, that, that spirit, and, you know, we have that same desire to serve people. That's what we are. And yeah. we look at ourselves exactly like public servants. We just want to make you happy, you oh, know, and we've been blessed say. to have a talent. So everybody, everybody's auditioned mm. for that position. Everyone's worked hard for their position in the group, mm -hmm. and they've been standing strong. And it's, it's, it's a luxury to have. It's a blessing. It's a gift that we all have that together, and we're still together. And you yeah. all have very distinct um, accents. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're English. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. But I mean, one would just assume America. No, one would think, American, you know, one assume. would assume that the Drifters <laughs> would, is would, basically, they started yeah, out, started yeah. out yeah. Amer yes. in America. Yeah. But how do you pull in so many different places from different people from different places? How does that happen? Um, the music transcends exactly. boundaries. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of like Bob Marley's music. You'll go to Hawaii and hear Bob Marley playing. You go to Turkey and France and Spain. So the Drifters' music has got that the universal appeal. Like Ray was saying, the key was kind of in the compositions and the songwriting, because it's very simple, but you can, you can hear the elements of like reggae, swing, doo-wop, the Spanish Latin influence with all the strings and, you know, lush orchestration. So all of that yeah. stuff is like, it's just, it's powerful stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah, you hear yeah. it and it's like, it, it kind of resonates with you before you yeah. even know what the song's about sometimes, because I, I remember as a small child hearing Under the Boardwalk and it was like, it's just a great song. You sing along yeah. to it and, yeah. and it just stays that. with you. It does. Well, I couldn't believe watching your soundtrack. Trust me, you guys are in for quite a show a little bit later because yeah. it's a, you guys just did an a cappella and it was your voices are all so crisp and Shucks. beautiful oh, thank you. and thank you. sexy. That's Ooh. what music Ooh. has to me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so happy to have you here, really. Yes. Now, we've got very exciting news to tell you. We are giving away five double tickets to see the Drifters live at Grand West Arena this Mother's Day weekend on Saturday, the 12th of May. So head over to our Facebook page right now, find our competition post, and share with us why you would like to take your mom to see the Drifters yeah. in concert. Now, this competition is open to Cape Town viewers only, and T's and C's do, of course, apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. But if you can't wait till Saturday, we've got more than the difference. Well, we've got more from the dif drifters. <laughs> difference. <laughs> Coming up after the break, I beg your pardon, plus an exclusive live performance at the end of the show. <laughs> Express 
Chuck is one of South Africa's leading organizations who aid families who are affected by childhood cancer. Afternoon Express, together with my school, are committed to helping Chuck raise funds for a newly refurbished home away from home. You can get involved by signing up for your free virtual My School, My Village, My Planet card today. Download the My School app, select Chuck as one of your beneficiaries, and help us make a difference. Introducing Clover Care, the first enriched milk packed with nutrients to help you take extra care of your whole family. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're so excited to have the drifters in the loft that we've got to actually make them something nice and tasty. But now as the days get cooler, it's getting more difficult to get out of bed. The winter warmer smoothie we're making today will keep you nice and cozy. Plus it takes all the boxes of goodness you need to keep you on track. Thanks to Clover Care Milk, enriched with 10 vitamins and nine amino acids and three minerals. It's the perfect addition to the smoothie. Now Clem, this might just be my go-to drink this winter. It really should be, and we're calling it a smoothie, a winter smoothie, but it's not cold. It's warm. Ooh, it's because delicious. of the delicious textures you actually get from this. It's like if it had to be a winter smoothie, this is it. I can't recognize any of your ingredients here, so oh, you really? have to fill me in. Okay, so we got some pumpkin seeds. They're great. They're packed in okay. with amino, with amino, well, aminos, yeah, so that's going yeah. in there. We've ground it up in a coffee grinder. You can use a person more oh, than her. Is that ground seeds? Yeah. Oh, oh, I see what you've done here. Okay, so what I've got, I've okay. got some milk in my pot already, okay? So I wanted right. to get to temperature. I'm still going to add more. In goes sure. pumpkin seeds. Then we got some sunflower seeds. seeds. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of great. You can just chuck this in your blender. Just blend everything. You know that one, right? Sesame. Like, sesame. Hoi. And then the other one is... Budgie food. <laughs> budgie food. <laughs> exactly. The budgies will starve this winter, but you'll be fed. What those is are it? those are lint seeds or flax seeds. Oh, okay, and again, perfect. the actual people have been using flax seeds for so long in the wrong way. You have to crush it to get the nutrients out of it. Everybody's oh, really? been like chomping flax seed and thinking they like, like it'd be so amazing, yeah. but no. Is, will that not be digested properly? Not at You've all. You've got to crush them too. Gotta okay, crush so it. this actually is exactly up my alley. This there we I go. I want to drink this. Then I've got some oats over there. The rolled oats, they can go in oats. just like that. Or you can ground it up. Okay. That's pretty cool. Uh-huh. And then nutmeg. So you can start adding some nutmeg for me. I don't okay. know how With this. to oh, what is this? Is this nutmeg? That's honey. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Today's my smart day, but how do I add nutmeg? With the microplane. Okay. There we go. Do I 
Watch the nails. I should have done that. You got it. So this is really great, and a little bit of nutmeg goes oh, a long wow. way. Yeah, it's strong. And did you know if you have too much nutmeg, you can start hallucinating. Like now, everyone's gonna start hallucinating because that's just so much. Look at that. Yes, yes, yes. Can you really hallucinate? You, you can. Too much but you have to consume so much, honestly, that it'll never happen. It'll never happen. Now, can I get some more Should clover? We taste it? <laughs> can I get some more clover care milk, please? Yeah, of course. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna go in with some honey just to sweeten it. Mm -hmm. So this is really great because, Look I mean, we have found that Ooh. South Africans on average are not receiving all the nutrients and vitamins they should be having every day. Is that so? So with Clover Care, it's great. You're getting all of that yeah. and the goodness of dairy. So it's like Ooh. a serious win. So my, my tip is to actually grind up all your seeds and nuts a day before, keep it like in a jar. It'll stay fresh for like a week. Okay. And every morning, to bring your milk to temperature, add it in, pop it into your coffee to go cup, and you're out the door. Okay. I actually like this. Oh, choking. I like this ch um, chilled as well. It's really, really delicious. So let's that go. That looks great. It smells delicious. You know what I smell? You Just nutmeg. <laughs> Did I put a little bit too much in no, there? No, it's fine. We're going to give this to everyone. Is it we, very distinct? We're actually going to give this to our camera crew during the ad break. So they start hallucinating. And you see the camera's drifting. drifting. <laughs> you know why. <laughs> here we, we go. We may as well do a drifter's music video while we're here today, especially with the creative cameraman. There we go. <laughs> Done. Okay. Oh, you know what? You it's finish stunning. it off. Salt. Himalayan salt, pink salt. Himalayan salt. Better. Thank you so much. This looks absolutely delicious. It's a pleasure. I love it. And it's such a great get up and go recipe. Remember to SMS Clover to 33650 to get this recipe sent directly to your phone. And if you missed it, here's a quick recap. We are back in the loft with the sensational Drifters. Now, the name Drifters, I suppose, was quite prophetic because over a very long history, members tended to drift in and out of the band <laughs> quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, How did the name come about design. first? It wasn't that way by design, <laughs> really? as I assure you. No, it just, but was it, just... it quite tumultuous or was it just, you know, people had done their bit and it was time for them to go mm -hmm. on or um, did, did a lot of things think, like, affect the, the group? Like, like most groups, you, you find everyone wants to find that leader spot, and they want to find their own individuality. Yeah. So many big names have done that in groups, like, i.e. like Lionel, Lionel Richie, a classic example. You know, people want to just sort of take their moment where they've got that audience to themselves, and it's all theirs, and they're responsible for absolutely everything. That one so it's kind of it's like time. a natural mm. progression. So uh, as it music. were, you know, yeah. um, some 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 singers just really want to stay within the confines of the group, you yeah. know, and and there are a lot of groups like that where everyone in the group takes lead, you know, like with us, we we all do leads. I'm the lead singer per se, but in reality, we all do leads. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, but it's 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 what you find. It's that it's that. Uh, that growth for yourself, that yeah. individual yeah. growth. Yeah, that's normal. That it's natural. It happens. Yeah. 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 But how did the name come about of the band? The name came about through George Treadwell, George which Treadwell, was the yeah. which the owner of okay. the name, the starter mm -hmm. of the Drifters, yeah. in 1953. He yeah. began the group, and uh, he was at that time married to uh, another singer by the name of Sarah Vaughan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so and they came up with the name, and we had a great, great artist at that particular time, uh, so we, yeah, yeah. What are some of the challenges that come with traveling so much? I mean, I know mm -hmm. a positive is that you guys become like family, but I'm yes. sure that when you return home, that and leaving again, that feeling of having to reconnect and detach again, does that become challenging? Um, Depends on your personality type, but yeah. I think yeah, luckily don't we don't really have a problem with it because mm. we're all night owls. We transition that musicians. Pretty, suppose, you yeah. know, so many years, you know, you know, you keep a bag packed. Mm. You know, you're going to be prepared to go at any given time. Mm. 
The main thing yeah, is we have a good team. Yeah. Mm. And, and, uh, I'm, I'm, close, so. I'm, I'm going to assume you mean like, sort of like family. Yeah, I mean, in terms like of family in terms and of the families. relationships you yeah. leave behind um, and come back there are, to. There are challenging moments mm. because no one wants to be left alone. We don't want to, you know, we've, we've, we, I've got kids and, you know, and, you know, so. Mm. He doesn't you know, say this off camera, know, by the way. Know. He normally says he's really glad you know. to get away from you. So. <laughs> Did you know that? He was in like, case you're watching you know, that. You know. <laughs> Don't listen. What does your life look like now? Are you all based in America, and then are you touring the all the time? No, we're now based in the UK. Okay. Mm. Uh, I was making the transition between different places that I was I, yeah. know, sort of. Uh, I've lived in Cairo and in America, California, mm. and uh, Spain, uh, Egypt. No, so I, I've just had, I've had, you know, just mad men. But we've always come back to Central London yeah. because we've been on CBS. We've recorded on so many labels yeah. that were based out of out of out of London. Okay. You yeah. know? So and how often do you tour? And how often do you travel? Uh, we tour right the year round. Mm -hmm. Wow. Whoa. Year in and year busy, out. Busy, busy, busy. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So you've got one performance in South Africa in Cape Town. Yes, mm. we do. What can the audiences look forward to? Well, a cuddle, a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just that's that's what they're hoping for. So what are they going to get? A kiss. That, that's if they make it backstage. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the, the songs. I'm really hoping mm. that they're coming prepared to really listen to some of the old, really, you know, really good music. You know, oh, well, then as a matter of fact, we're mm. incorporating some of the new stuff out today because we do that. You know, mm. we we oh, sort of cover oh. the full gamut, you mm. know, of, of the of the spectrum. Has your can, I, can I just say something as well, because Ray won't mention it because he's quite modest, but for people who have never heard him sing before, they're going to get a taste of the authentic sound of the yeah. Drifters, because Johnny Moore became the sort of synonymous voice because he kind of held yeah. the baton between, what, the 60s and the 90s. That's right. That's and right. all of our famous songs, or, or, or most of our favoured songs from the Drifters, it's that, that classic sound. Mm. This man has it, so that's what I would say he's going to bring to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And how has your sound amazing. evolved over the years? Um, it's kind of, it's more straight along with the times. As a matter of fact, you know, I wouldn't say it's as evolved as I think the world has just kind of slowed, slowed back for it, really. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because just, yeah. music, go, go, go. You know, be, because um, we've not done anything any different, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. and the it's music, it's, it's, it's classic, it's timeless, yeah. Yeah. Right. so it doesn't yeah. need to change. Yeah, so yeah. it's not really changed, that's what I was saying, that mm. it's not really changed for it. But the it's world has kind of slowed world. back yeah. to just kind of keep it, like this and mm. walk along and carry something. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. special. It is very special. I yeah. want to know if any of you have any special pre-show rituals because you've all got such beautiful voices. Because you're touring so much, are they not at risk of of d getting damaged or hurt? So do you drink like mm -hmm. honey or whiskey or old brown sherry or what he are your, your pre-show <laughs> rituals oh, he does. to keep Audio those voices so warm times. and smooth? Don't give me any <laughs> excuse depends. because now that becomes the yeah. Oh, no, no, don't tell true. my that's studio that that doesn't work because that's what I like to work <laughs> <laughs> with. She's, like yeah. she's got a stash back here. Really? Yeah, yeah. Really? yeah. Really? Really? It's really good. After the <laughs> camera show yeah, off yeah, and diving back That's exactly what they've been telling me, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I know what it's, where it's coming Under from. Under the board. What? There you yeah. go, I can do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. A couple more whiskey, she's in the group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. We Thank are so for looking us. forward to your performance a little bit later. Yeah. So another reminder that we are giving away five double tickets to see the Drifters live at Grand West Arena this Saturday, the 12th of May. Head over to our Facebook page right now, find our competition post, and share with us why you'd like to take your mom to see the Drifters in concert. This competition is open to Cape Town viewers only. T's and C's apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. After the break, we're joined by fashion designer and activist Tasman Johansson, founder of the brands Democracy of Denim and Eyewear SA. If you need to get away, begin with flights from just 99 Rand by planning your escape with Travel Start and Uber. Get these incredible early bird deals by booking a flight or package through Uber Escapes and you will receive a voucher code for four free rides up to the value of 100 Rand each, which you can apply on your way to the airport on holiday. It's just another amazing way to enjoy hassle-free, budget-friendly getaways with Travelstart.co.za and Uber.
thank you so much for joining us back on Afternoon Express live on SABC3. Now, African fashion has taken the world by storm over the past few years. And in South Africa, the local industry is booming. This is largely, largely thanks to the dedication of local designers to supporting South African manufacturers and promoting sustain, sustainable materials that keep our local economy ticking. Now, Tamsin Johannesson is one such designer who founded two brands that support all things local, Democracy of Denim and I Wear SA. Hi, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. What great names, firstly. <laughs> yeah. How did you come up with them? Well, firstly, uh, it says it in the name. Uh, it's a lot about choice and making the correct decision. Yeah. So when you're shopping, as a consumer, you have the ability to make a better decision in yeah. your um, consumer habits. Yeah. Democ the democracy of denim. What is that right. truly about? Well, it's power to the people. Yeah. Democracy, it's demos kratos, it's power to the people. And we, as the South African people, have that ability to strengthen our economy again with our decisions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're a designer, but you're also an activist. And I think your activism shows through your designs. Tell us a little bit how you do that. Well, the, I suppose the, the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, part of West South Africa and um, democracy of denim is uh, sustaining livelihoods in South Africa. Yeah. So in terms of activi activism, uh, that plays an important role. And we do this by making sure that all of our production is uh, local and that we are building sure. networks between South African designers and really creating a presence in, in our country. Um, you know, you, you want to go on, on a, an inter international platform, but first we need to change. Totally. Yeah, charity Local, begins at home. Exactly. Yeah, it needs to start here. This is where we need to really empower um, our own people. Yeah. yeah. And, and more and more in South Africa and, and Africa at large, we're seeing um, activists marrying their love for fashion mm. with a consciousness. Mm. What do you think is, why do you think that's happening more and more? I think we need to pull away from this very capitalist uh, approach to life. Consumers, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you, you almost want to hold on to things for longer. You don't just want to, mm. you know, from the shelf into the trash can. Uh, we, so many hands go into mm -hmm. what you put on you. It goes from a pattern maker, a cutter, a layer mm. upper, a sample hand, a machinist. Those are the hands that go into creating what you have. Yeah. And so you, you become more aware of the people involved. And I suppose that's why we need to be more conscious yeah. of our clothing. That's so beautiful because yeah. the way you just said that, it does make you th more aware of what you're wearing and who made your clothes. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about the I Wear SA campaign. So the, the, the hashtag or the, the campaign really took off um, with, the fashion, with the People's Fashion Show, uh, which was basically a platform for other designers that also need to um, um, get out there, get their voice heard um, in the fashion industry, in our local industry. And um, it was just a, a, a group of designers that got an opportunity to showcase on our platform, the Wear South Africa platform, um, at various uh, malls. So it's just bringing together people with their own flair. You know, yeah. they were wearing their own, their own fashion. They had their entourage wearing, you know, everything. And for me, that, that was special, seeing... You know, it's, it's ours. Yeah. 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 The materials you use, obviously, to make um, your clothing, you source quite consciously. Yes. Tell us about the process of that. And, and I mean, I'm sure it, it must be difficult because it's easier to just buy everything mm. well, in China. Well, it's much cheaper to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as well. Yeah, it's, but how, how mm. tough is it when you've got mm. a smaller business and you're trying to get your name out there to, yeah. to, to focus on sustainability? Um, well, luckily, I am part of the, you know, a, a bigger company, so there is that support um, when you've got um, the buying power from one department, you know, you can piggyback on, mm. on their order, and so there are ways around it. Yeah. It is difficult, and it's, it's sad because South Africa used to be a hub, a textile hub, and you know, we used to have our own manufacturing plants for, uh, uh, for materials mm. and raw materials. And uh, you find that a lot of it has to be sourced now yeah. internationally. But we, we're, we're slowly 
taking yeah, back the so power. Sad. I remember all of those, I mean, South Africa was a hub for textiles, and then at one point, literally all of the CMTs closed down. Mm -hmm. wow. So that obviously puts a lot of people like, out of work. Out of work, And then yeah. the quality, I think, of fashion also goes down. Yes, especially compromised. local quality. Like Cyril Ramaphosa also said in his State of the Nation address, you know, getting people to love local more and to buy local and to mm. support your local mm -hmm. artists and your local designers and your local manufacturers. How can that be done? How do you encourage people to love to buy local more? I think the, the, the biggest problem or obstacle at the moment is that people don't necessarily um, see what they, what, what's available. What's available, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, Absolutely. so there isn't mm -hmm. a, a, a big awareness of it. And the other uh, obstacle is obviously affordability. You know, with, with smaller ranges or smaller buys and with local production, the price tends to go up, but yeah. people also need, need to understand that those garments are going to be there for longer than a week or a month. Exactly. So um, I think the biggest biggest uh, way to overcome that is to inform people, let them know that when you purchase this, it means that Auntie Fatima can now, you know, yeah. uh, make sure that her granddaughter is going to school. Exactly. When you purchase this, you know that, you yeah. know, instead of um, not getting a tertiary education. There is yeah. somebody that has a bursary and now. they can use their hands. I like that one meme yeah. saying, when you support a small business, somebody's doing a happy dance with every sale. <laughs> That's so Which sweet. is so important to remember stuff well, like that. Thank one you. of the ways we like to let people know where the mm -hmm. stuff is available and what is available is uh, asking you to do a fashion show for us. So you've brought along some beautiful garments. So take it away. Would you walk, talk, talk us through exactly what you've brought us? That's so gorgeous. So this is the yeah, range, so. um, Where is A? Yeah. And the title of the range was Femme Utility, which basically just shows how, um, it is, despite being a very uh, functional, it can also still be beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Form versus function. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a look at your next piece that you've got for us. Oh, that color is stunning. So Very you're again, for this winter. The, the uh, focus is on comfort. Uh, you'll see the undergarments very comfortable, and you know they could be paired with sneakers, with your heels. Yeah, it's got it's very functional. I mean, it's just I love I love what, when a garment is beautiful, but it's just get up and go. Mm. Yeah. You can get on with your work in your day and still look gorgeous. Yeah, let's have a look. Love the next piece. Oh, Bonnie, that is so you. Totally. <laughs> Bonnie's I'm, always in a jumpsuit. I'm always in a jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a complete when outfit. When I'm sleeping, I'm in a onesie. <laughs> During the day, I'm in a jumpsuit. <laughs> maybe, she was, maybe she was in a nappy, then she went to a onesie, now she's in a jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the bathroom's a mission, but I'm yeah. always in a jumpsuit. I love this. Well, that's okay. something to consider for the about next one. Um, so it's, it's again based on the uh, workwear boiler suit, yeah. but it's softened up. So that's the feminine oh, I version. Love that. Yeah, and you can dress that up or down. Actually, that yeah, goes definitely. Well, then it's belted for a night out. Mm -mm. Me and mm. be paired with some combat boots. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's lovely. So again, tell us, talk us through this one. That's an again, this style. is just very, um, very comfortable. Yeah. But with you know, slight detail, um, not one for too much or yeah. going over the top. But I mean, it's got that little detail, the tuck at the at the hem of the pants. Yeah. Nice I see there's lines, always nice a flavour of like kind of combat military utility mm, in your exactly. clothing. Is that something that really speaks to you? Yes. For where is a by the utility aspect always comes out. Um, when I'm doing, you know, something that's a little bit more sports like, you see the buckles mm -hmm. and some of the strings, and it's it's always there. Utility and very like, that's functional yeah, I love pockets that. and yeah. Yeah. Where is a? That's really such an important message. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. And for bringing this fantastic collection. We look forward to seeing more from you. Thank you very much. Really lovely. <laughs> now more from the world of fashion coming up after the break as we delve into the life of a digital influencer with model, blogger, and fashion enthusiast. Ghislaine Mutombo.
if you do just one thing this year, bank better in 2018. Get the Capitec credit card with a limit of up to 150,000 Rand with personalized interest from 14.5% based on your credit profile and affordability. Bank better to live better with Capitec. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. And if you do one thing tonight, make sure that it's tuning in for the presenter search, the very first episode of the presenter search. So tonight we are in PE and right. you meet the judges, right. which is myself and Patience Stevens, uh -huh. the producer of Top Billing, yeah. and DJ Fresh, uh -huh. who is fresh to death. He's so cool. And then Sounds we go like to it's been an exciting journey. I mean, I yeah. got a chance to be a guest judge in the Johannesburg leg, and yes. there were so many people. It was such a yeah. huge turnout. Yeah. People were so enthusiastic. Without giving too much away, what's the journey been like for you as it's a judge? It's been incredible. It's been absolutely overwhelming seeing the response from people coming to audition. And then also the amount of talent that we've seen in the country <clears throat> has been absolutely incredible. Port Elizabeth, okay, that's tonight was by far my favorite city. Really? Yeah, Port Elizabeth and Durban actually brought out the best talent for me. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's good so to tonight's hear. gonna be really good. There's a lot of funny people that auditioned as well, a of lot course. of amazing characters. Really of such beautiful, amazing uh, you know, energies that came in. So yeah. amazing yeah. energies. <laughs> I started <laughs> speaking so well. <laughs> but no, it's gonna be a great show. Please do not miss it. It's gonna be absolutely fantastic. Lots of fun as well. Now the wait is over and this season of Presenter Search on three premieres tonight at 7.30 on SABC3, brought to you by Capitec and Mac Cafe. This season's contestants will put it all on the line to uh, claim their spot as the new face of Top Billing, Expresso and Afternoon Express with literally thousands of potential stars auditioning. Now this season promises to be the best yet. Make sure you tune in for the first episode which kicks off tonight in the friendly city of Port Elizabeth and here is a snippet of what you can expect from the first episode. Make sure you catch Presenter Search on 3 this Thursday at 7.30pm when we unearth the talent in PE. Presenter Search on SABC3, we out here. Thousands of hopefuls have actually braved this weather in pursuit of possibly becoming SABC3's next presenting sensation. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Only on SABC3. Yeah. Enjoy a moment in between with McCafe. Yay, I'm so excited to watch the episode tonight. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. Now, fashion is no longer just about clothing. It's a medium that expands across many different platforms. And in recent years, the term influencer has become a widely used term to describe people who create content for social media, inspiring a whole subculture to either buy into brands or ideas, as well as contributing to current trends. Absolutely. Now, Jocelyn Mutombo is one such influencer and model who has gained popularity through her fashion sense and beauty blog called Bizu by Jocelyn. Welcome, Jocelyn. Hi, Lovely guys. to have you with us. Thanks for having me. I'm yeah. happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Firstly, congratulations on your blog, Bizu. It's Thank absolutely you so brilliant. Much. Bizu is, of course, it means kiss yes. in French. That's my favorite thing <laughs> in the world. <laughs> How did it come about? How did you start it? So, I've always loved fashion. Um, I've always wanted to be a fashion designer. So I made my quest to do it, but I couldn't complete the course because it was too expensive. Wow. Hence, I got into fashion and I learned so much about it. And, you know, being a model, you meet all the brands, the photographers, um, you know, the PR companies. And it's really just inspired me to do more and show my creativity yeah. uh, with fashion. Yeah. Curating content is not child's play. No, I mean, people not. think it's just putting on a cute outfit and then asking a friend to snap a pic. But the more you do it, the more you actually realize it needs to be quality and it needs to be smart. And, 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 and people who do it really well get ahead. Yeah. 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 What do you think is happening in the influencer space? Are, you, is the, so, are we separating the chaff from the wheat? Because I feel like there are millions of influencers. I know. And everybody's so different. I can only speak for myself. So when I started influencing, I said to myself, I really want to share my passion, invest my time mm. and money. So what do I want to do? I want to make money. Yeah. That's what that was my aim because essentially one day I want to release my fashion line. And what better way to acquire the audience than influencing, you know? Mm. So I, I see that people have fashion and we connect on this uh, platform. That way when I release my fashion line, I already have my people and we yeah. can learn from each other and really just harness the passion 
you know, yeah. Yeah. grow it from but there. But how do you, I mean, let's talk about the business here. How do you make the money? How do you monetize just photographs on, uh, yeah. on, on, on an Instagram, yeah. for example, or from a blog? How does the, the transaction of actually it becoming valuable take yeah. place? So first you, you do your research and it's important to realize that being an influencer is actually about selling advertising space. Yeah. That's what you're doing. Um, what is your niche? My niche is, is fashion. And when you do something that's your niche, it incites consistency. Mm. It, you know, there's no point saying I'm a travel blogger, but then you just don't travel, you know. It's like <laughs> you have to actually mm. do what you want to do. And so once, once you invest that time in it and the money, you can then say, hey, this is the quality brand I have. This is my insight. This is my knowledge that I can share with my followers mm. who have acquired specifically Oof. for me. So um, because of this, because yeah. I also, you know, I've been featured on Expresso and I'm um, Instagram of the year, hello, pay me some money. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, so yeah. sweet. And, and is it also just, I can imagine it's not just about being fashionable, right? Because right. anyone can really put on a cute outfit, but it's about using yeah. fashion as a language. How have you, so have you seen line. yourself learn that over the years? Yeah, so like my first post versus now, I'm like, oh my God. Um, what I've was learned it? What's so the difference? Much. Tell me what the difference is. Um, just first creatively, now. you know, at first you're like, oh, I want to be cool. Like, I want to take a bomb picture. Yes. And now you're like, <laughs> and I'm like, I really love planning my shoots. I want to tell a story. Mm. Um, I want the background to be telling a story. I want my collaboration with my photographer to be telling a story. Mm -hmm. My my, my um, standout point is that I'm myself and I take pride in the people I work with um, and the brands that are, you know, big or small. I really mm. take time to make sure that I express myself in them as much as possible yeah. and make that combination. Yeah. And what do you think sets you apart from the other influencers? Because there's tons of them. You don't see it, Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> I see it. I yes, want to know from yes. your perspective. Um, <laughs> I believe in quality you content cheeky. all the time. Yeah. I think that mm -hmm. if you want brands to approach you, I mean, these are people that work with PR companies. Like, mm. you know, they write out treatments, they have the best photographer, they have the best lighting. They they've have got like, great copy. Yeah, yeah. they've yeah. got yeah. great, and you have to do it yourself. So you can't come and impress them with like, just med like not mediocre. Okay, but how do you do it yourself? Mediocrity. Because your photos all look really professional. So how do you put it together yourself? Give um, us the the play-by-play the -play account. Okay, so firstly, I've got a great... Look at that picture. Oh my goodness gracious, that could be yeah. in vogue. And you um, did that alone? No, I didn't do that alone. Some ah. of them are selfies. I've got a remote, <laughs> right? So really? I love remotes. Yeah, yeah. the best, remotes right? You just the future. <laughs> done. And the other thing is I try my best to always um, surround myself with people that feed into my passion, that will inspire each other. And those are connections. That's when you meet your you know, collaboration for photographers, for brands. And those people are really going to bring your creativity to the next level. You need to co collaborate as much as possible. Yeah. You need yeah. to be in front of the camera as much as possible. You need to be learning about brands as much as possible. Mm. So this is where that comes from. You know, we collaborate together um, and some of them you pay them because you have to invest money into your brand. Um, and then others, it's a collaborative effort. Absolutely. Does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. it does. I mean, it's, what, what do you think of the argument that people have been posing that influencers influence influencers? They just influence each other and yeah. aren't really actually influencing people that, that yeah. brands want to actually pull in. I'm sure there's that. I think it's like a wild, Yeah, I'm not wild, saying it's happening west, with everyone, you know? but that's some of the argument yeah. that's out there, yeah. It's like the wild, wild west. You'll find everything. I mean, it's the internet. Wild, wild You'll wild find west. everything, you know. Um, and as much as there is that, there are people that are really investing into their craft. Yeah. Um, and if you follow with consciousness, you, you can't just follow because it's popping. You know, but if you really follow someone and you know what you're about, you'll know who's the, who's the influencer yeah. influencing an influencer, yeah. apart from, you know. And you are the are influencer with the mostest. Congratulations on your Cosmo 2017 award. Thank you so much. Well, it must be nice to be recognized for doing Absolutely. such yes, great yeah. work. Especially by magazines such as Cosmopolitan, yeah. Yeah. you know. Even as a model, I've always wanted to work with them and I get to work with them on this level. So it's really amazing. 
um, you know, it's, it's, I feel like I've brought the modeling together, the fashion design together, yeah. All your you know, the, the creativity your together. And yeah. there's still more to come because, you know, there's no, there's no like end to creativity. Yeah. I think there's always a growth to, to it. Oh, you are magnificent, and I absolutely love going through yeah. your stuff. Well, you're well magnificent. Done. I know. You're supposed to you. back now. <laughs> <laughs> so coming up after the break, we get your feet tapping with the live performance by one of the world's most prolific vocal groups, the Drifters. Stay right there. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, since the 50s, the Drifters have entertained audiences around the globe with their distinct doo-wop style. Currently in South Africa on tour, they've got a one-night-only performance coming up at the Grand West Arena on Saturday night. Here's a little taste of what you can expect. Some fun under the boardwalk. People walking above. 
under the boardwalk and we'll be falling in love under the boardwalk boardwalk yeah come on over guys wow that was so good oh how exciting my mom's in Joburg, unfortunately, otherwise I would absolutely take her to go and see. Well done, guys. Yeah. A lot of romantic ballads, though. So yeah. I'm sure some oh, yes. If you're not taking your mom, you've got to take your loved one. Oh, why? Yeah, yeah. What has been the biggest highlight, do you think, of the Drifters to date? Uh, well, for me, it's... It's mm -hmm. some of the magnificent concerts. Well, we've had the pleasure of serving kings and queens all over the world. So we've Amazing. we've performed for royalties absolutely everywhere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that I, I would say really the highlight has come from some some of the smaller, smaller intimate places. Gigs. Exactly. Some of the very yeah. intimate times we, we've had. You know, places yeah. we've performed. You're also on the is it the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Is Rock it and roll all of, of you that's been? Yeah, listed. that's right. The group has been. Yes. That is incredible. Twice, twice inducted. Yeah. Well. yeah, that's unheard yeah. of, actually. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, is this your first time in South Africa? Yes. No, not yes. in South Africa. It's the first time in Cape Town. Okay. Oh, wow. So, you've yeah. got a lot of sightseeing yeah. planned. A lot of oh, fun stuff we're, planned. We're just looking forward to. We have a great producer, and he's uh, he's promised us lots of sights and things like that. We're only here for a short, short period of time, yeah. but we've been promised we're going to get a chance to meet just the you know sort of everybody and people just here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. So, no know. sleep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Are you going to go on safari? Well, I hope so. We're supposed yeah. to be uh, Saturday, if well. we've got time, maybe. Otherwise, You'll this has been it. like a safari team. I'm afraid they might lock me up in a cage. <laughs> we are the nicest animals you're going to see yeah. in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't fight. <laughs> well, I'm um, right. <laughs> <laughs> Join us again tomorrow as we go <laughs> forward <laughs> <laughs> to Mother's Day this Sunday. Joining us is producer and director. Director Diana Keem, who is making a film called Don't Be Late for My Funeral, which tells the story of the often overlooked role of domestic workers in raising children in South Africa. Thank you so much for being on the show. It's been absolutely Thank wonderful. You guys were absolutely yeah, legends. I hope your gig is going to be sensational. Send all of the mother's love from us on stage. Absolutely. Absolutely. We really intend to do our very best. Yeah. <laughs> and we hope that you come back to South Africa really yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah. Don't what have is too the, many groupies. Yeah. What, <laughs> is that warm? what is the one thing that you want to do while you're here? Anything in particular that you want to eat or anything traditionally African mm. that you want to try out? Me, I just want to try a local dish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know I know Absolutely. the seafood's great. We've already had a little sample, had some yeah. cake earlier, yeah. but yeah, I yeah. want more. Well more. you've come to the best area for it. Excellent. Yeah. Your list of recommendations on. if you need oh, it. Excellent. That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, thank you so thank much you again so for much. being here. We've absolutely thank loved you. it. It's thank such you. a beautiful performance. Yeah. We'll be See back again, home. same See time, same place. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>